I'm Lori Saltzman, and I am one of the co-founders of Open Floor Movement Practice. Been at that for about five years. When I was about 26, which was quite a few years ago, I was dragged onto the floor of a Gabrielle Roth workshop, a retreat. And I insisted on taking my own car because I, sh I was sure I was going to leave, that this was not for me. And the minute I stepped onto that dance floor and the drums started playing completely involuntary out of somewhere, my body said, I'm home. People like to tell me their first time stories. The first time they set foot on this kind of dance floor that wasn't about steps, that wasn't about looking good. And they come up and tell me, I feel like I just came home. And coming home, I take to mean when they tell me that, that they've come home to a part of themselves that they left behind. Living in a culture that doesn't honor honest expression, living in a culture where you're supposed to look a certain way, living in a culture where we've outsourced dancing to the professionals. What a shame. You know, people say to me, I'm not a dancer. And I just, I know that's not true. It's our nature to dance, to move, to dance in community, to connect, to celebrate, to grieve, um, to release what is binding us to even declare war on something. We dance, we dance together. So to recover that essential part of ourselves, people are blown away and they come from all different walks of life, ages, backgrounds to something that we share. And in Open Floor, we, we talk a lot about working with the hungers, the essential human hungers. And we have a lot of hungers, but we focus primarily on the hunger for solitude, because in this 24 hour digital world, we're, we're getting input all the time. Some people don't remember what it's like to just be quiet and listen to the inner voice. People are hungry for one-on-one -on -one intimacy. They're lonely. People are hungry for belonging somewhere besides Facebook. Uh, and people long to express their own spirit through their bodies. Uh, that to, to feel the force that is larger than themselves that moves everything, moving them. As I turn in my life cycle, so is my interest in the work that I do. For years, it was all about getting people to get free, get wild, get released. Uh, we were, were such a sedentary culture. Um, but it's changing for me now. I still honor those things. In Open Floor, we talk about the embodiments. And one is, are we physically embodied? Do we know that we're in our body, in a body, that this is for this lifetime, this is my address right here. This is my address. This is where you'll find me. Um, this is how I express spirit in this world, in this body, with this voice, with these limbs, with these movements, with these relationships. The second level of embodiment is emotional embodiment, meaning do we have a certain kind of emotional intelligence? Can we tell the truth? Can we identify how we're feeling? Can we even know how we're feeling emotionally? Can we communicate that to someone? Can we listen to someone else communicating their emotion? Can we tell the difference between the past and the present? Because of course, we all have a past and whether good, bad, or everything in between. And the past visits the present all the time. And can we tell the difference? Is this history or is this really happening right now? Am I in danger or is that just a really well-tuned response from my past? So the emotional embodiment is a really important part. It's the relational piece. It's the, can I be in a relationship? And I feel like people are so hungry 
for intimate emotional relationships. We recently changed Open Floor into a nonprofit organization so we could do more service work and perhaps get grants to bring our work into countries or communities with really suffering economies and see if we could get funding for that. We need to use movement work as, yes, as a consciousness practice, as an awakening practice, but we need it to build communities for lonely people. Uh, we need it to understand inclusion and exclusion. Who's welcome on the dance floor? Who does not feel welcome on the dance floor? It's hard to hate someone who you're dancing with, who you have danced with. It's easier to know somebody through a movement practice where you're having fun and it just takes off by itself and you don't have to do anything right. People meeting in that setting. Now, how do we open the doors and make all people feel welcome? Is your dance floor a place where someone of a different gender identity would feel welcome? Is it a place where someone from a different culture would feel welcome? Is it a place where someone who's 80 would feel comfortable walking in the door? I took the Zen hospice training, and now I sit one day a week with people who are passing. And that has been a tremendous change in my life. There's nothing like sitting with people who are on their last breaths to awaken every breath I take in a different way. I, it has completely changed me in the most beautiful way. And they, um, they said when we were training, they said, we know you came out of the goodness of your heart to um, serve people who were passing, but you will find that you have it backwards, that they are serving you. And it turned out to be so true, so very true. Uh, I love my life more. And I feel like my students are serving me. And doing this work is serving me to love this life while I have it. And too many people are not loving their life. And when they dance, just to put it in really plain English, when people dance, and they dance with each other, they feel better, <laughs> they're happier.